Mars has just passed its closest approach to Earth for 2020, at a distance of around 62 million kilometres. And though that varies a bit, that's about as close as the red planet comes to planet Earth. So there's no chance that Earth could collide with Mars, right? <laughs> no, don't be ridiculous. Except there is, and it's because of chaos theory. If you have two bodies in orbit around one another, like the Sun and the Earth, if there weren't any other planets in the solar system, you can write equations that will tell you exactly how they're going to move forever. If you want to know the position of the Earth in its orbit on October the 10th in the year 4,302,021, you can just plug the numbers in and get an answer instantly, without needing to do a simulation of the intervening time. However, all you need to do is add a third body, say Jupiter or even the Moon, and suddenly you can't write an equation to determine their position at any moment in time. You have to laboriously calculate it, step by step from the present day. In physics, this is known as the three-body problem, and the solar system has way more than three bodies. One sun, eight planets, and thousands of minor bodies, like moons, asteroids, and comets, all pulling on one another with their respective gravities. Though the Sun's gravity is by far the dominant force in the solar system, these tiny tugs from everything else on each other can add up to be immensely significant over cosmic time. Because the solar system is big and complicated, it's both hard and probably unwise to run experiments on it. So let's start with something simpler, this pendulum. It's called a double pendulum because it's got a pivot up here and then a second pivot halfway down here. And if I set it going, it starts out relatively simple, but rapidly becomes very complicated indeed. There we go. The behaviour of this thing can't be predicted by simple equations either. It doesn't matter how hard I try to set this off in exactly the same way twice. Minute differences in the way I release the pendulum each time mean that the motion ends up looking radically different. Let's rewind and try that again in slow-mo. Because they were released from almost the same position, they actually start off moving quite similarly, but slowly at first they drift apart. And eventually, if you wait long enough, the very small differences between how I release them are amplified, and the pendulum's motion looks erratic, completely unrelated to each other. The motion of the pendulums is described as chaotic, what this means is that tiny differences in how things start can result in enormous differences to how they look later on. The motion is impossible to predict into the indefinite future, just like it's hard to forecast the weather more than a few days in advance, or predict the positions of planets in the solar system more than a few tens of millions of years into the future. The problem is, when you try to predict the future behaviour of pendulums or planets, you somehow need to get absolutely perfect measurements of the positions, speeds, masses, and so on, of all the pieces of a system at a moment in time. If your measurements are even slightly out, those tiny errors will slowly add up to throw off your predictions. Perhaps not by much at first, but eventually leading them to diverge substantially from what actually happens. In 2009, astrophysicists set out to test this with two and a half thousand incredibly precise long-run forecasts of the motions of the planets in the solar system. The only difference between these two and a half thousand attempts was that the position of Mercury was varied by less than a millimetre between each simulation. Bear in mind that Mercury is 4,880 kilometres across, orbits the Sun at an average distance of 60 million kilometres, and is a massive ball of rock weighing 300 billion billion tonnes but altering its position by half a millimetre is enough to make a big difference, if you wait long enough. Thankfully, in 99% of simulations, nothing crazy happened. The planets all continued roughly on their current orbits, maybe changing how circular they are, or changing the angle at which they orbit a little bit, but nothing dramatic. However, in 1% of cases, there was literal chaos in the inner solar system. The villains here are Jupiter and Mercury. Jupiter is the largest planet, meaning it has the largest gravitational influence, and by a strange coincidence, an orbital synchrony with Mercury that means it can, in those 1% of cases, drag Mercury's orbit over millions of years from being an imperfect circle to a very elongated ellipse. If Mercury's orbit gets stretched enough, it could smash into Venus or end up diving into the Sun. 
However, both of these are pretty good outcomes for the Earth, because things settle down once Mercury has been destroyed, and our orbit remains largely stable. But the worst case is that Mercury's gravitational influence destabilises the whole inner solar system, resulting in orbits that look like this. Mars's orbit has been so distorted that it crosses the Earth's, meaning, if we're unlucky, that we could collide with Mars. Even if we didn't actually smash into each other, a close approach between the Earth and Mars could prove disastrous. Massive tidal forces could rip Mars apart and shower the Earth with debris. I find it quite amazing that we can predict eclipses to the second hundreds of years from now, as though the whole solar system is a pocket watch and we fully understand its workings. And yet, as we recede deeper from the present day, not hundreds but millions of years, the future of the solar system, and even whether the Earth will survive until its end, disappears into a fog of mathematically inevitable uncertainty. The good news is that out of two and a half thousand simulations, only a handful ended in disaster, which means there's probably a greater than 99% chance that the Earth will survive for the next five billion years without being destroyed in a collision with another planet. However, the chaotic nature of the motion of the solar system means we can never quite be 100% sure. And that means we should keep an eye on Mars. For now, its closest approach means a few weeks looking bright and beautiful in our skies. But in the future, the closest approach of Mars could be too close for comfort.